Hello and welcome to my presentation at the UK IVA Virtual Machine Vision Conference. I'm Paritosh Prayagi. I'm a product manager here at JAI and I'll be taking you through my presentation on high resolution, high dynamic range imaging technologies for machine vision applications and talk a bit about what JAI has to offer in this regard. Now, dynamic range is the term used to describe the difference between the brightest part of a scene and the darkest part of a scene at a given moment in time. In other words, the amount of contrast within a single image. When we talk about high dynamic range, we're talking about scenes with so much contrast that it may be difficult or impossible to find an exposure time that keeps the bright areas from oversaturating, while also keeping the dark areas from simply turning to black such as the scene shown here. This of course applies to applications such as electronics inspection or metrology, where we have both shiny and dark components or glare on metal parts, but it can be just as difficult in outdoor applications which have sunlight and shadows to deal with. Here is another example which depicts the challenges in high contrast scenes. Note how there are details in each exposure that may not be visible in a different exposure, such as the clouds in the sky or the shadows behind the columns on the building facade. None of the exposures can capture the entire scene without significant portions of it either undersaturating, that is turning to black, or oversaturating, that is turning to white. This indicates that the contrast of the scene is beyond the dynamic range of the camera. Looking at various machine vision applications, there can be many scenarios where high dynamic range imaging may be required. There are the outdoor sports and virtual reality applications such as vision, vision systems for traffic, high-end surveillance, sports broadcasting, stadium management, and virtual reality. And then there are the applications such as life science, electronics and flat panel inspection, metrology and inspection of metals such as car bodies. All these applications face the challenge of the camera dynamic range not being enough to produce a good image contrast. Now there are several ways, several techniques which allow us to go beyond the dynamic range of the camera. Typically called as high dynamic range imaging, there are four popular methods that are used in machine vision applications. These are sequential image fusion, dual sensor image fusion, dual gain single exposure, and multi-slope exposure. Let me explain each of these one by one. Now, the sequential image fusion has been used by digital still photographers for many years. This method takes two consecutive images of the same high contrast scene with two different exposures. For the first exposure, a relatively slow shutter speed is used such that the darker areas of the scene produce non-zero pixels, ideally values that can be easily distinguished from the camera's own dark noise values. For the second exposure, a shutter speed is selected such that the brightest non-saturated pixels in the first image produce small but non-zero values in the second image. These pixels are used to determine the overlap point between the two images. And then software is used to fuse the two images together. Using the overlap point as a reference, the saturated pixels in, in the first image are replaced with the corresponding non-saturated pixels from the second image. Using this technique, two 8-bit sensors can easily handle a 14-bit scene and generate accurate linear data. A compression function can then be applied in order to display the result in a non-linear fashion on screens with lower contrast ratios. For still photographers, this technique is typically used with landscapes or other scenes with little or no movement. Thus, even if it takes a second or two to change the exposure, 
the two images can be fused together without any spatial offset occurring between the two images. At a first glance, it appears that this method is unstable for machine vision applications, especially methods which um, involve rapid movement. But the development of a camera function called a sequencing trigger, along with continuous advances in the camera frame rates, has made it possible to use this method in machine vision applications. Another method of capturing high dynamic range images utilizes a dual sensor prism based camera. In these cameras, a beam splitter prism divides the incoming light to two precisely aligned sensors mounted to the back faces of the prism. Thus, both imagers are able to simultaneously capture identical views of the high contrast scenes. The prism architecture of such a camera is shown on this slide. Separate electronics are provided enabling the user to apply different shutter and gain settings for each of the sensors. In this way, the bright areas and the dark areas in the image can be handled by two separate images. This is similar to the first method I mentioned, the sequential image fusion, but difference is that the prism arrangement enables both the images to be captured exactly at the same time. This eliminates any concerns over movement of object during the exposures. By reading out the two images and identifying the overlap point, a true linear high dynamic range image can be generated and the values can be assigned to pixels with a range that is nearly double the bit depth of the individual imagers. In other words, if the imagers are operating in 8-bit mode, the linear high dynamic range values of 15-bit or greater are possible. In a 10-bit mode, the values can span to an 18 or 19 bits. Software can then be used to compress the linear values if required and if the application demands the images to be displayed on a monitor or in a standard image format. This can be done on the host PC. There are also some cameras which have inbuilt functionalities for performing image fusion and image compression. An innovative method of high dynamic range imaging is a dual gain single exposure method, which uses two separate analog gains. And these separate analog gains can be applied to the converted electrons on the floating diffusion gate for each and every pixel. On the camera, these high and low gain images are then combined to stretch the dynamic range, providing values to pixels that might have otherwise saturated or fallen into blackness. With the dual gain single exposure method, if your system needs to work with the actual pixel values from the image, you can output 14-bit linear HDR images that maintain the pixel values captured from the scene. It's important to note that you would also need a frame grammar that can support the 14-bit output from the camera for feeding to your application processing routines and that you wouldn't be displaying these raw images on a typical monitor since monitors don't support the 14 bits. It is also possible to have the 14 bit HDR information compressed into 8, 10 or 12 bits. The compressed HDR is based on something called as a knee point. Some cameras give users the ability to define a single knee point based on the percentage of exposure time and the percentage of saturation voltage, that is the fill level. And the rest of the 14-bit data is then bent or compressed at this knee point to fit within the available bit depth. By compressing the image into say 10 or 12 bits, you no longer have the precise 14-bit values for some of your pixels, but your HDR image is now completely viewable, which is essential for most of the sports applications, virtual reality, 
and basically any application that needs a human to, to see the image on, on the screen. The dual gain approach I've been describing provides a good picture quality and is well suited to HDR imaging of moving objects. Dual gain does not give any motion artifacts because it's all done with a single exposure that has then two different gains applied. However, because the gain is fixed at the sensor level, the HDR range could be limited to an additional of 6 dB on top of the existing camera dynamic range. Here is another simple example of using the dual gain HDR function. As you can see in the picture on the left, with the HDR function off, we have trouble with our exposure. The calendar on the wall next to the window is a little darker than we would like it to be. And yet the scene outside the window is still oversaturated. But when we use the HDR knee point function in the image on the right, we can increase the exposure on the calendar while also significantly improving the exposure of the cars, the house and the hills outside. This is yet another example of dual gain HDR, where the original scene on the left depicts less details in the dark areas of the picture. The image on the right is after applying the HDR, where the pixels, which were otherwise fallen into blackness, now depict some gray levels with a good level of contrast. Another method of HDR imaging is the double shutter single gain method. In the double shutter HDR, so this method is basically not suitable for moving objects as it involves two consecutive exposures, which will lead to a motion blur effect. However, for applications where the objects are not moving or where they can be stopped momentarily, double shutter lets you control the dynamic range much more accurately as the exposure time allows for a wider variation of values than the analog gain setting. The double shutter can take the advantage of the built-in frame integration capability in the cameras, where the two exposures can then be fused together to calculate the HDR pixel data. As this method is based on the exposure time, it can add at least an additional 12 dB on top of the camera's dynamic range. Important to know here is the double shutters to exposure and the frame integration does have an effect on the frame rate of the camera. Now that was about the methods that uh, are most popular for high dynamic range imaging. Um, at JI, we do have cameras which support high dynamic range imaging. Uh, these are uh, area scan cameras starting from 5 megapixel going up to 45 megapixel. Um, then we also have the 20 megapixel cameras. Um, the 5 and the 20 support the high dynamic range only for monochrome imaging, whereas the 45 megapixel supports HDR for color and monochrome both. Um, the 45 megapixel uh, camera, it uh, offers uh, two different modes of HDR. One is the, the dual gain single exposure and then it also has a uh, built-in um, double shutter HDR. Um, talking about the, the interfaces, um, it's, it's, a, it's a wide variety, depending on, on the camera uh, that you would need for your application. Um, the 5 megapixel cameras, um, they have the USB camera link, GIGI, and CXP interfaces, whereas the 20 megapixel has the USB camera link and CXP. For the 45 megapixel, the CXP interface um, is, is available. Um, so this is based on the version um, CXP version 
uh, the version 2.0 is something that is releasing shortly. Um, and uh, then we would also have a 10 gigi version and an optical 10 gigi, which is the SFP plus version um, being released soon. Um, and then I have a final slide about, about JI um, an overview about the cameras that, that, that we offer. So JI has basically been around in the machine vision industry uh, for over 50 years. Um, we have a very broad range of cameras for area and line scan applications. Um, we focus on multi-imager cameras, which are cameras with, with a prism and multiple sensors. And then we also have product portfolios for area and line scan which focus on single exposure, uh, single sensor, sorry. Um, for each of these products, we do have several new products on, 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 on release uh, on, on the market for area and line scan. Um, if you want to know more about the products, um, feel free to contact me or, or have a look um, on our website. Now, uh, that was it from, from my side. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to, to contact me. Um, and if you want to have a look at our products, please visit, visit our, our website. Uh, you can also contact uh, our engineering team um, by filling up the form on the website. Um, and yeah, so thank you for your patient listening and have a good day.